Welcome to the online ultrasound tutorial for Penn State's Anatomy and Physiology courses. In this video lesson, we will discuss a general overview on ultrasound technology, the equipment used in an ultrasound exam, and ultrasound terminology. In future lessons, we will examine specific areas of the body such as heart and liver and how to conduct those ultrasound exams on patients. Ultrasound machines conduct sound waves through transducer probes. These waves travel from the probe into the body, bounce off of body tissues and structures, and reflect back to the probe. The probe contains specialized crystals to send and receive high-frequency sound waves. The sound echoes that return to the probe are translated into a picture by a computer. The computer projects a grayscale image onto the screen. The frequency of the sound waves emitted from the probe determines how clear the image is or how deep into the body cavity they can reach. Sound waves are energetic waves, and although they are safer than other imaging technology, if used for too long, ultrasound waves can be harmful. In the upper right-hand corner of your ultrasound screen, you will see two numbers indicating the TI, or thermal index, and MI, the mechanical index. These levels are there to protect patients from any harm caused by an ultrasound exam. There have not been any reported cases of damage caused by an ultrasound exam in humans, but these indexes have been studied in animals. The thermal index is a ratio of the power used over the power required to raise the temperature of the tissue 1 degree Celsius. The mechanical index is the risk of the ultrasound energy beams interacting with gases in the body, such as in the lung. The energy can excite the gas molecules and start creating larger bubbles of gas. This is called cavitation. To keep MI and TI levels low, we ask that once you have found the organ or tissue you are looking for, freeze the image on screen by pressing the freeze button on the console. You may then remove the probe from the patient's skin while you examine the image further. When performing the ultrasound exam, there are a few accessories you will need to have prepared. Ultrasound gel is used to ensure there is no air between the probe and the skin and enhances the sound waves traveling to and from the probe. Use a generous amount during the ultrasound exam to ensure your images will appear properly on the screen. If you use too little gel, your image may be dark gray or black. Provide your patient with a pillow and blanket to lay on. A sheet may also be provided if they would like some privacy. Once the exam has finished, you may use dry paper towels to wipe off the transducers. The patient should also use dry paper towels to wipe off themselves. Using a notebook, record any observations you have made during your exam. If you have the permission of the patient, you may also use a cell phone or camera to take pictures of the images on screen. Due to the large amount of student use, we cannot store and send pictures via the ultrasound machine. Transducers come in many shapes, sizes and are designed for specific functions. There are three transducers that are used in this lab. The 3S phased array probe, the 4C curvilinear probe, and the 12L linear probe. Each probe will emit a different frequency of sound, optimized for the area of the body on which it will be used. A low frequency probe, such as the 4C curvilinear probe, will be used during abdominal ultrasound scans. It has a low frequency, which allows for greater depth, but a lower resolution. It also has a wide footprint, allowing it to scan larger areas of the abdomen. In contrast, the 3S transducer probe has a higher frequency range. This produces higher resolution images, but means sound waves do not travel deep into the body. With a small footprint, the probe can send sound waves between ribs, making it the optimal probe for cardiac ultrasounds. Lastly, the 12L transducer probe emits the highest sound frequency. While the images are much clearer than other probes produce, it cannot transmit sound waves deep into a cavity. For this reason, 12L probes are best suited for joints and superficial anatomy. A probe marker is a small ridge or LED light on the side of each transducer. When conducting ultrasound exams, we hold the probe such that the marker is facing a certain direction.
This ensures our images are oriented properly on the screen and that we are scanning in the correct direction. During an ultrasound exam, hold the transducer like a pencil between your fingers. Drape the cord around your neck so that if the transducer falls, it does not hit the ground. When your exam is finished, place the probe securely into its holder on the ultrasound cart and drape the cord along the side. Ultrasound imaging is also known as grayscale imaging because the images appear in different shades of gray. There are varying levels of gray, from white to black, and these levels are called echogenicities. Echogenicity is the ability of a tissue to produce an echo. We see these differences due to the structure or tissue that the sound waves are bouncing off from. If a structure is highly echogenic, it will produce a lot of echoes. The structure will appear white, and we would call the structure hyperechoic. Connective tissues, bone, and tendons are examples of hyperechoic structures in the body. Observe in the image the hyperechoic tissues surrounding the gallbladder and liver. In contrast, structures that do not produce an echo appear black and are referred to as anechoic. This lack of an echo is typically found when we are ultrasounding fluid-filled structures such as the gallbladder, heart, and blood vessels. In the image, blood vessels are shown as round black circles. Homogeneous tissues tend to blend in with other surrounding structures. These tissues are said to be isoechoic. The liver, for example, is an isoechoic organ. We can only observe the shape of the liver due to the surrounding connective tissues appearing hyperechoic. Lastly, organs that are dense will appear dark gray or hypoechoic. The amount of fluid present is not enough to appear black, and very few echoes return to the probe. An organ or tissue's function will relate to their echogenicity. The terminology used when performing an ultrasound exam is important to understand and describe our internal anatomy. In summary, Ultrasound technology uses high-frequency sound waves to produce an image on the screen. There are three types of probes which we will be using in lab to perform our ultrasound exams. Each probe has a different shape, frequency, and purpose. Ultrasound imaging is in gray scale, and there are four types of echogenicities or levels of gray, hyperechoic, hypoechoic, isoechoic, and anechoic. Thank you for watching our online ultrasound tutorial.